All right, what the heck is null reference? You see it all the time, it happens, you're coding away, you hit F5, or you hit the control P button, and boom, null reference. We're gonna take a look at some common causes of null reference and other uh, exceptions in there, missing reference exception, unset, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at those exceptions and those mistakes um, that you may make. I mean, everyone makes them, I make them myself, and, and, I, and they're in the videos, so it's not, not just you, uh, you're not alone. Um, but we're going to take a look, a close look at them after the fade. So to give you an example of what I mean, we have this ball here that it should have a force applied to it when we click this button, but what happens is we click it and we end up with this here, which is a null reference exception. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the details of this, but basically, uh, if I make the screen smaller here, You'll see that when we, if the console is not available, just go to window and then down here there is console. Just make sure that that's clicked and you'll be able to see the, the exceptions here. And you can see that there's, this is actually errors and exceptions, warnings, and then just basic output. Um, so you see here we have a null reference exception. Offerance, off, uh, bleh, object reference not set to an instance of an object. And it tells you the, the file and it tells you the line that it occurred on but it also gives you all this information here. So for those of you not familiar with this, this is called a stack trace. A stack trace is, it starts at where the, the code was called and then it shows every single method that was called right up until the point where the failure occurred. Now this is great because it means we can actually track bugs. So if we double click this exception, we'll see that it's happened on this line here. Now, this line only contains one reference. So this is a reference to an object here, which is our game object. So I'm 99% sure just by looking at this code, uh, and, and again, this is from experience rather than from just, just, um, just having a look at the evidence here, that I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be null. So in order to test that, I set a breakpoint here, I just click in here, and then I click on attach to Unity. And when I go back to running this, when I click the button now, the breakpoint is going to stop at that line. So I press uh, apply force, and you see now that we have our little orange flashy cursor thing there. And you see that it's now stopped on that breakpoint. So now the breakpoint stopped on there. I can now use my, I can use these keys up here, uh, these buttons up here. Uh, to move on to the next line, step into, step over, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I can also hover over certain things. So you can see here uh, that if I hover over here, it says object name is sphere. If I hover over here, it says game object is null. Okay, so this line here is gonna try and find a game object called sphere and then put that reference to the game object inside this variable here. So if I press F10 to move on to the next line, you see that the next line now gets highlighted in yellow. And I look at what game object is, and game object is null. So anything that's null can't be accessed. It means there's no object there. We don't have a reference to an object. So this line here is going to fail. So if I press F10, you can see that it just jumps over that, and then we end up with our stack trace here. So why is this failing? So the object name is sphere but the object we're looking for is actually called capital S for sphere. So if I go into my inspector here and then change this to sphere. Now you notice that this value here, we don't need to change this value because this is actually a public field. Unity will actually serialize this out. In other words, it will save it with the scene. So. Uh, I mean, we can just for safety's sake change that to an S, but we don't need to change it to an, uh, a capital S um, because it's already going to pick up that that new value that we put inside our inspector in here. Now, if we attach to Unity here and we press play, and then we click on Apply Force, and now we have our sphere. 
and it crashes. Why does it crash? Um, because Unity has crashed. Or has it crashed? What is going on here? Well, this is the great thing about doing things that are live. Um, okay, Unity has actually crashed. Awesome. Well, that's good. All right. Well, stop now. Okay. Well, let's kill Unity and start again. So I'm going to kill Unity here, and I'm going to start up again. Unity again, and I'm going to run it. So we click on Apply Force, and then we come down here. We see the object name is now Capital S Sphere, and we press F10. And now our game object is no longer null; it is actually the correct value, um, and it still <laughs> crashes out uh, because Unity is crashed. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> yep. So this is great. So apparently debugging today is a bit of a nightmare in Unity 5.3. Uh, I should probably get the latest version of Unity. Anyway. Um, Okay, so let's try this third time lucky. No. So we'll just give it a straight run and we should see that the the ball applies here, but actually it's not gonna work because um, we've got this exception down here as well, which is there is no rigid body attached to sphere game object, but a script is trying to attach it. This is another example uh, that I was wanting to show you before all the crashes, but basically uh, you can also have a missing component exception as well, which is Unity's fancier way. I think this actually happened in 5.x. Don't quote me in that, and if you know the, you know, let me know if I'm, I'm wrong with when this came in here. But I don't remember seeing this in Unity 4. Um, but this is the, the new exception. It says that you're trying to access a component that doesn't exist on an object. It's a great idea. Uh, I, and I applaud it, but I, I don't remember seeing it in, in Unity 4 and below. Anyway, so what that means is if we go to our uh, plane and you see that we have a sphere that's part of the plane here, uh, you see that there is no rigid body over here. So when we click on component here and we do rigid body, and we add our rigid body component, now when we run, we save the scene, and now when we run the scene, uh, the ball should drop to the, the plane, and then when we click on Apply Force, everything should work. So if we want to debug that, hopefully it won't crash on us. But let's just check this out. So we're going to press Play. And we're going to click on Apply Force. And we're going to press F10, and that gets us our game object. F10 gets us our rigid body and then all of this is not null, we can then continue on. Okay. So that's the, the, the sort of first half. How we can actually tidy this up so we can not get null references. Uh, this, is a, this code here is actually a terrible idea. Um, you never want to do this. Um, the best way to do it is to use either get the game object, if you just want to access the game object and several components in there, or even better, you just want to have the component itself. So instead of this, um, this field here, what we really want to do is we want to have public rigid body, um, rigid body, and we're going to call this the rigid uh, uh, force is to be applied. 
made. So instead of having all of this down here, so we can get rid of our two lines here because we're now going to pass in our rigid body here. And we're just going to substitute those RBs in there for rigid bodies because we are passing in our rigid body up here. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we get this wrong. Now the, the great thing about getting it wrong is that you immediately know that something's gone wrong and you're not going to end up with uh, an error that happens at runtime. Now remember what we did when we got the null exception was we got an error at runtime. So our sphere is on the plane, we click on apply force, everything looks okay, the sphere dropped to the plane, we click on apply force and we get our unassigned reference exception. So that means that we have tried to access something that was unassigned. So, and again, you can see we have a stack trace. So you can see everywhere that this occurs and you can actually step through here. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like um, inside Visual Studio as well in just a second. So um, it says here that this happened in the push method on the apply force to component script at line 19. So if we go to line 19, you see that this happened at this point here. And the reason why this happened at this point is because we haven't actually assigned our rigid body here. So if we go to our apply force script object, you'll see that we have no rigid body applied to that. So if we drag that over to our rigid body, and we attach this to Unity, and you'll see that we have this window here called call stack. If you go to debug windows, and it's in here somewhere, call stack. This is the call stack here. You'll see that, that when we get an error, we, we saw the call stack. If you actually want to see the call, the call stack when you're debugging, you want to open this window here. So let's press play. And we click on apply force. Now remember that our rigid body has now been set. It's gonna be this sphere here. And we click on apply force. And now you see that we have our call stack. Now the great thing about call stacks, um, it's not gonna work for us here because we can't actually get access to any of these modules because this is, we're going into Unity here, the, the sort of hidden bells of Unity. But when you have your actual code and you see the list of your your modules here, you can actually step back and you can, you can you know, hover over uh, variables here. You can find out the contents of variable. It's, it's a great tool for, for debugging. Um, and I'll talk about that more in the next uh, video. Anyway, so our rigid body here has now been set. So when we press play, you see that our rigid body is now moving the, the sphere. It has its, uh, its force applied to it and everything is good. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, as usual, I, I very much appreciate um, your, your viewing. Um, yeah, so uh, until next time, uh, take care. Thanks very much.